Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathic Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today, we will be doing Robert Chapter 23, Classification of Sora, Part 1. Well, in this part, there will be many uh, subtopics right from the head to the toe along with their soric symptoms. So let us see what this video has in store for us today. For vertigo, it has numerous sensations of vertigo, which is aggravated by motion or often induced or aggravated by emotional disturbances. So the important part out here is aggravation by the emotional disturbances and also by walking, by any sort of motion, looking up and quickly rising from a sitting or lying position. You also get bilious vertigo due to GIT disturbances where there is floating, where there is abdominal bloating and spots before the eyes. Desire to keep quiet by lying down which ameliorates. In this desire to lie down and better by lying down, we have the outstanding characteristics of the whole underlying condition. So the vertigo is better by lying down and aggravated by any sort of motion and aggravated by any sort of emotional disturbances. This is the important takeaway point. Headache, Sora all, alone never causes structural changes. As you all know, Sora will only have functional disturbances. So they are sharp, severe paroxysmal headaches, which often come on in the morning, increase as the sun rises and better when the sun goes down. So the pains are different characters in Sora, sharp, shooting, paroxysmal headache, which comes on or which is aggravated during sunrise and better when the sun goes down. So from sunrise to sunset, it is aggravated and better by sunset or when the sun goes down. They are usually frontal, temporal or parietal regions which are affected. And the headaches are with red face, throbbing type of pain, better by rest, quiet, sleep, and better by hot applications, which are all soric manifestations. So you can see the number of all the types of pain out here are, are of a great variety. You get a sharp shooting pain, paroxysmal type of pain, or throbbing type of pain. The bilious nausea and vomiting comes on at regular intervals, better from rest, quiet, and sleep. They are again soric manifestations. So when associated with GIT complaints or bilious, no, there is associated with nausea and vomiting. The characteristic desire to lie down and be quiet is manifest in, fe in, fe in feverish children who desire only to be let alone. So again, the important ameliorating part of Sora is better when lying down or better when being quiet. Soric manifestations may link in almost all disease conditions and they are always better by heat. So all the soric conditions are better by heat. Hair and scalp. Scalp is dry and rarely perspiring. The hair is lustrous and so dry that it cannot be combed without wetting the comb. So the hair, so there's dryness of the hair. The hair gets entangled when it is combed and you cannot comb the hair without, getting, without wetting the comb because the hair is so dry. So there is also hair fall during illness and also premature graying of hair with split ends, itching of scalp with dry eruptions. These eruptions are better, are worse in the open air in the evening, better by scratching, but burning and smarting follow the scratching. These eruptions do not separate, but dry down and become dead scales. Eye symptoms, there are no, again, there are no structural changes under this uncomplicated stigma. We find no pathological changes. I repeat, in Sora, only functional disturbances. The symptoms all have to do with functional relationship and are closely related to emotional disturbances. Just like the vertigo, which is also ag aggravated by emotional disturbances, eye complaints also are related to the emotional disturbances. The soric eye is intolerant of daylight or sunlight, and the symptoms are worse in the morning from the rising of the sun, and they are better by heat. There are spots before the eyes. This is a characteristic manifestation of this miasm or this stigma. So the patient sees brown or black dots or black floaters before the eyes. The eye, eyelids are red, 
which is a combination of soric and syphilitic in the tubercular diathesis. So the eyelids also are red, and you will see this especially in the tubercular diathesis on tubercular myosin, which is a combination of the sora and the syphilitic myosin. Ear complaints, ear troubles are functional or nervous in nature. The auditory canal is dry and scaly. We rarely find an, an abscess condition in the soric ear. So abscess formation will have to do with the tubercular mass. So again, in Sora, you get the dryness of the mucous membranes, of the serous membranes, of the skin. So therefore, just like the scalp was dry, similarly, the auditory canal is also dry and scaly. Since the stigma has such marked nervous reflexes, we expect to find the characteristic oversensitiveness to the sound. So again, there is also oversensitiveness to sound because of the marked nervous reflexes. So hypersensitivity is another important uh, symptom of Sora. Face is like that of an inverted pyramid. Similarly, in the tubercular myosin also, you will get face is like an inverted pyramid. So remember, whatever is there in the soric myosin, the same thing will be there in the tubercular myosin, except that in the tubercular myosin, the symptoms will be heightened or exaggerated. So tubercular myosin is nothing but exaggerated sora, and there is pathology. In sora, there is no pathology, only functional disturbances, except for the first stage of inflammation. In the tubercular myosin, it is accentuated sora, but it has great pathology. So that is the difference, basic difference. No perspiration on the face and head. In syphilic condition, there is perspiration and also in the tubercular diathesis. So again, because of the dryness, probably there is no perspiration or scanty perspiration, especially on the scalp or the head or the face. However, in syphilitic and in tubercular diathesis, there will be much perspiration. The lips are red, often red to bluish, parched and dry. So in the soric, the lips will be red. In tubercular also it will be red, but the lower lip is so red as if it would burst and blood would come out. It is, it is so much red. So this is how you have to differentiate the lips of Sora as that from tubercular myosin. So in Sora, the lips are red and or they may be uh, a, a bluish hue to the lips. They are parched and dry. Face is pale, hot and shining. Acne on face, dry and itching. Dryness of skin with an unwashed appearance. Rushing of blood to the face, burnings of hands or feet, hot flushes are characteristic of Sora. So along with the dryness of the skin, the face looks very unwashed or dull. There is rush of blood to the face or there is false plethora. That means when the patient coughs, when the patient laughs, when the patient sneezes, there's a transient rush of blood to the head and the, and the face looks completely red in color but that is just for a few seconds. That is, that is what Roberts means, means to say, rushing of blood to the face. There's also burnings of the hands and feet. And he says that the hot flushes are the characteristic of Sora. The no symptoms, oversensitiveness to odors, unusual odors waken him up from sleep. Again, because of the hypersensitivity in the auditory canal, same thing takes place in the nose also. Oversensitive to odors. Cannot sleep where there are strong odors like perfumes make him feel ill and faint. There are painful boils or pimples on the septum, but no malignant manifestations. So at the most, in Sora, you will only get the first stage of inflammation or the furuncles or the boils or the pimples. Only inflamed pimples, no pus formation. Lupus of the nose is a manifestation of the combined stigmata and is closely allied to the tuberculosis. Oh, so the lupus of the nose is a tubercular manifestation or tubercular stigmata or the tubercular manif or the tubercular myosin, which is a combination of the sora and the syphilitic myosin. In the mouth, you get sores around the mouth. Again, the mouth is dry, the lips are dry, they are cracked, swelling and burning around the lips rather than fissures. Presence of thrush and stomatitis, taste is perverted, and you get burning taste in the mouth. So the first stage of inflammation, so therefore you get stomatitis. Also, there is bad taste in the mouth, or it may be sweet, bitter, or sour. There is regurgitation of the taste of foods. Patients are very sensitive to taste. 
that's all for this part. Now we will see in the next part, the GIT symptoms onwards. Thank you very much.